Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you join me in welcoming Dr. Jackson to Washington, D.C. My pleasure. And you've come up from Williamsburg where you went to a conference? That's right. And you're on your way back to South Dakota or to I'm South Dakota? On my way to South Dakota uh, and then back to Kansas. And you do a lot of traveling? Well, mostly in the wintertime or outside this planning season. Mm -hmm. In the service of your government? In the service of my government. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you have parents or, or um, relatives that were working for the government that uh, inspired you back in the, your boyhood days? No. No, I've had no uh, close relatives that have worked for the government. Tell, no. tell us a little bit about your boyhood. Well, I was born and raised on a farm in the Kansas River Valley near Topeka, a little west of Topeka. Mm -hmm. um, west of where the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company is now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a truck farm, but also had livestock and, and grain. We had corn, wheat, uh, cattle, hogs, horses, strawberries, watermelons, sweet potatoes, cantaloupes. That's impressive. Uh, it was an extremely diverse corn. Uh, even even uh, some sugar cane one time and flocks and peonies and so on. My father told me years ago that it was not uh, polite to ask how large somebody's farm was, but I have to ask you anyway, was this a large farm? No, the, well, the, the acreage, acreage I grew up on was 40 acres and then we had another 20 acres or so that was my father's uh, family land down on closer to the river and then we rented a little land besides so I would say a total of about 70 acres. That's fairly small as farms it's go. It's fairly small as farms go but it's interesting that that acreage brought six children through a depression and they never went on relief. And you ate well. And we ate well. Mm -hmm. uh, there was not much money but there was plenty of food. That's what's important. That's what's important. And the family stayed together. Um, did you have extended family? Well, I, my grandfather, um, who was born in 1855 and in Virginia, came to Kansas uh, in 1877 and had bought um, this, um, maybe just a little over, um, let's see, it would be, 80 and 90, about 170 acres mm -hmm. there in the Kansas River Valley, and then he had four children. This is your paternal grandfather. This would be, no, it would be my maternal, my mm -hmm. mother's uh, father. Mm -hmm. uh, his name was Charles Wesley Stover, um, <coughs> who incidentally was the uh, uncle of General Eisenhower, President Eisenhower. Uh, his, his sister was mm -hmm. Ida. Uh, then, um, but before that, my great-grandfather, uh, Robert Hall Pearson, was, came into Kansas in 1854, the day of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, mm -hmm. and settled, and uh, fought in the, um, uh, in the Battle of Blackjack, which was the first battle between free state and pro-slavery forces, rode with John Brown. So our family's been in Kansas for a long time. <coughs> and there are a lot of relatives mm -hmm. uh, still around, and a lot of them in agriculture, a lot of them, most of them now in other things. Mm -hmm. Was there a particular member of the family that made a, a lasting impression on you? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, back in those days, there was still such a thing as community. Yes. And um, so uh, the, the community as a metaphor and the community as a mystery mm -hmm. um, was, uh, I'm, in looking back now, I see the power of, of community as both a metaphor and a mystery and that there were things that were at work uh, in the community so that there was no, I would say, any outstanding person. Of course, my mother was outstanding and my father was outstanding and my brothers and sisters, I, I'm one, the last of six, they were all outstanding in my memory, but it was because of a rather close family and a close community. Mm -hmm. And did you go to the proverbial Little Red Schoolhouse? It was a two-room country school mm -hmm. uh, that um, uh, there were four grades in each. We had no kindergarten. So you must have had two teachers. We had uh, we had two teachers, and um, uh, grades one through four in the little room, and five through eight in the big room, and um, 
It was uh, divided right down the middle. There were six kids in my class. I was the only boy through most of my grade school years. Mm -hmm. Then went to Seaman Rural High School, and all the little country schools fed that high school. Mm -hmm. And Seaman was the name of the town? Uh, no, Seaman was the name of the first principal of that high school, but it was the it was Seaman Rural Vi High School in the north part of Topeka, uh, which is now a huge high school. But there were, uh, I think, 42 in my graduating class from high school. And from there you went on and to? Then I went to Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina, which is a Methodist college that had about, I don't know, four or five hundred students, maybe less than that at the time. I went mostly to play sports. What, what did you play? Well, I played football and track the first year, but then played football for four years. And, and uh, I would say that my lure was more sports than it was the academic. Mm, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it took me a long time to grow up. <clears throat> so where'd you go next? And then I, uh, my wife and I married uh, in the middle part of my senior year, the middle part of her junior year. Had you met and, her at college? Well, I, when I was a freshman in college and she was a senior in high school at Abilene, mm -hmm. I uh, met her. And then uh, this was um, um, 35 years ago yesterday, the 26th of well, February, 1955. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, then she came to Kansas Wesleyan, mm -hmm. and uh, so I couldn't get a coaching job nearby. And so I started a master's degree in botany at the University of Kansas, and she went to the University of Kansas and finished her last year. And then I went to, um, I, I took two years on the master's in botany, and then, um, and she taught the second year in Ottawa, and then we both moved to Olathe, Kansas, and from 60 to 62, I uh, taught biology, coached football and track at Olathe High School. And uh, our first daughter, child, was born there, Laura, in 61. Then from 62 to 64, taught at Kansas Wesleyan in the biology department. Back to your alma mater. Back to the alma mater. And our son was born there in 63, Scott. And then from um, 64 to 67, I worked on the Ph.D. at North Carolina State in Raleigh in the genetics department, took a Ph.D. in genetics. And then <clears throat> from 67 to 71, back to Kansas Wesleyan, four and a half years there, January 67. And then in that time, why I put uh, put put out the book *Man in the Environment*. Yes. And, and then uh, uh, the California State University in Sacramento. It's called Sacramento State at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, its name changed while I was there. They hired me to organize the environmental studies program, and so I directed that for a while. And and then uh, uh, took a leave of absence in um, '70. Four, uh, went back to the land we had in Kansas and uh, tried to do sort of a homesteading type thing with uh, sort of subsistence level living and we wanted to get our children out of suburban life. We didn't want to see them raised in shopping malls and Little League. We'd been living where in California? Well, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, I was either for, uh, either had to resign my, I had tenure and was full professor at California State at Sacramento and either had to resign uh, or go back. And so I res we resigned and, and started the Land Institute. Mm 